On November 23, 1987, Ryan Air Service was operating a Beechcraft 1900C as a regular scheduled passenger flight from Kodiak, Alaska to Anchorage, Alaska with intermediate stops at Homer and Kenai, Alaska. Ryan 102 departed Anchorage where the fuel tanks were filled at 1605 and arrived at Kodiak at 1709. While in Kodiak, the airplane was redesignated as Ryan Flight 103 with the same flight crew, 17 male passengers, many of whom were hunters, and two female passengers who boarded the airplane and occupied the 19 available seats. The airplane was emptied of cargo and no fuel was added. The Kodiak station agent stated that the first officer asked that the airplane be loaded with 1,500 pounds of cargo. The agent thought the first officer's request was unusual because in the past, Beach 1900 pilots had, uh, with a full passenger load had asked for either 1,100 or 1,200 pounds of cargo. The station agent also said that the first officer told her before we could get 1,500 pounds on board, it would bulk out. The baggage loader stated that with the assistance of the captain and first officer, he loaded cargo into the cargo compartments. In addition to suitcases, gun cases, frozen crabs, two dogs and kennels, the cargo included approximately 13 to 14 pieces of packaged venison that weighed 795 pounds. The baggage loader stated that after loading the cargo, the tail stand of the aircraft was about one inch from the ground and that was the lowest he had ever seen the tail stand to the ground. He stated that typically the tail stand, the tail stand came to within three to four inches, maybe a little bit more of touching the ground. A passenger on Ryan Flight 103 testified, the earlier flight that is, he testified that the airplane seemed like it would never become airborne during takeoff. He said that after the main gear lifted off the runway, the airplane then fell back to the runway and accelerated for another 15 knots before it became airborne. The passenger stated that the airplane then seemed to climb out rather steeply. Ground witnesses indicated that the Flight 103, when it was on short final to the Homer Airport, its wings began to rock back and forth, then it appeared to drop steeply to the ground rather in a flat descent attitude. The aircraft struck the airport perimeter fence before sliding to a stop on its belly. The investigation revealed that the airplane's leading edges were coated with three-eighths of an inch of rime ice when it crashed. Although ice accumulation would have affected the airplane performance, the safety board believed that under allowable CG loading, the amount of ice that was found would have only a minimal effect on the airplane's controllability. The results of the investigation indicate that the loss of control of Ryan Flight 103 resulted directly from excessively aft CG. The out-of-limits CG occurred because the aft cargo compartment had been loaded with 1,600 to 1,800 pounds of cargo. With the passenger and fuel load present on Flight 103, any cargo weighing more than 850 pounds in the aft compartment would have displaced the CG beyond the aft limit. The CG would have moved st still further aft as the airplane burned off fuel. The investigation indicated the total weight of the cargo, including carry-on articles and two hunting dogs, were 2,283 pounds. Assuming for an allowance of 150 pounds for carry-on articles, 103 was overloaded with 600 pounds beyond the first officer's request. This resulted in a CG that was 8 to 11 inches aft of the aft limit. Despite the fact that the airplane was overloaded beyond the first officer's request, the pilots were responsible for accurate weight and balance computation. Neither the captain nor the first officer fulfilled his responsibility for determining the airplane loading and for calculating an accurate weight and balance before departure. Although Ryan's procedures clearly were spelled out, appropriate methods of determining the weight and balance, the investigation determined that these procedures were not followed. The airplane was loaded with approximately 600 additional pounds of cargo beyond the 1,500 pounds the first officer requested. When the wing flaps were extended for landing at Homer, Pitch control was reduced due to the effects of aft CG condition of the airplane. 
Ice accumulation on the leading edge of the wings of the airplane did not cause, but may have contributed to the increase in stall speed. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause of this accident was failure of the flight crew to properly supervise the loading of the airplane, which resulted in the center of gravity being displaced to such an aft location that aircraft control was lost when the flaps were lowered for landing.